The return in tennis is not just about getting the ball back in play, but there is a deeper strategy behind it. Stick around to find out what that is. Hey, it's Brennan from AceTennisOnline.com, where I'll help you level up your game. Now, in this video, I'm going to help you level up your return strategy by giving you a simple tip. Now, our goal on the return is to not just get that return back, but we actually want to work our way into the point to give us a better chance of winning it. So on the serve, the server should have the advantage, especially on that first serve. And that leaves the returner with a disadvantage. So on the first serve return, our goal is to try and neutralize that. So which means we want to get to a point where nobody really has the advantage. So we want to get to a point where it's pretty even. Nobody has the advantage in this case. On the second serve, however, what I like to do is I like to attack. So in that case, I want to get off at the, uh, on an advantage, and I want to put the server at a disadvantage here. But so let's dive a little bit deeper into it. Like I said, on the first serve, our goal is to get back to neutral. And this is much tougher if you're playing a stronger server. So think about Serena Williams or John Isner, two really big servers who make it a lot tougher for the returner to get back to neutral on that first serve. And both of them actually have really good second serves, which makes, which makes it tough sometimes to even get off on a good foot on their second serve. But against our average server, our goal is to get back to neutral or maybe even put some pressure on them. So what can we do to put more pressure on them? Well, take a look at Osaka here. Okay, so two things that I want you to notice here, and those are the two things we're really gonna try and focus on in this return strategy. Now, number one is look at where she's making counters. She's actually really close to the baseline to return this. And what does that do? So if we're closer to the baseline, what it does is it takes time away from our opponent. So as you can see here, by the time Osaka's main contact, her opponent, Cornet, is just landing, and now that return is already coming, and she doesn't have a whole lot of time to do something with it, so now she's going to end up being pushed back, especially if you return deep, obviously. But the goal is taking time away. It's going to put a little bit more pressure on your opponent, it's gonna, and it's going to rush them more often. The second part, though, of this is the depth. And this part is crucial. Again, Taking time away is good, but if you can get that ball deep and push them back, even better. Because now, now we're flipping the script. Now take a look at how Cornet is positioned here as she's making content. Now this is actually really good for Osaka because how tough, have you ever hit a, have you ever tried to hit a forehand while one foot is off the ground and you've fallen back on that? If you have, you know that it's tough. It's tough to control it. It's tough to get power on it. It's tough to be aggressive with it. So if you push your opponent back and get them off balance, perfect. Now we've gone from Cornet maybe having the slight advantage on that serve to Osaka hitting a good return with a good strategy, and now she's pushing her opponent back. Okay, so now we flip the script a little bit, and in this case, it's almost, almost safe to say is Cornet at a disadvantage, and Osaka has the advantage. So exactly what you want as a returner. And you know what? I'll even throw a bonus tip in there. Returning down the middle is actually a lot smaller than people might think. Now, you might think, well, if you return down the middle, you hit it right to your opponent. But by taking time away and taking the return earlier, you actually don't give them a lot of time to do something with it. So return early, return deep, return down the middle, again, can be great because it doesn't give your opponent a lot of time to set up for their shots. But also... It takes the angles away. So now, you know, let's say she might be able to do these. She might be able to hit these two angles. Whereas if you hit that ball, let's say, from over here, she can hit a much tougher angle. Or from over here, from the other side. Let's take a look. She can hit a much tougher angle. So by hitting down the middle, you're actually limiting those angles. And that's a good thing. So let's go back to it. So top bottom line here, top three tips. Return early, return deep, return down the middle. But we're not done yet, so stick around. So take a look at what happens. So see, Cornet left that ball short, and now Osaka is able to attack, get her on the defense, keep the advantage with some powerful ground stroke, and then be able to finish that. Now, you don't have to hit shots like Osaka to be able to win a point, but the goal is, once you have the advantage, whether it's on the serve, on the return, 
or even on a ground stroke, make sure you don't let it go. So once you have a power, you hit a powerful shot, or it doesn't even have to be a powerful shot. It could be a drop shot. Any shot that gives you the advantage, it's like a shockwave. What that means is the impact is most felt with that shot, but you still have a slight advantage on the next shot, so don't let it go. So once you, you make impact and there's a little bit of a shockwave of your good shot, they're going to struggle to hit one good shot back, but don't let them get back in the point. You want to make sure you keep the advantage until that point is over. So you don't want to let your opponent get back in the point. So keep your foot on the gas and make sure to hit like and subscribe and smash that like and subscribe button like Osaka smashed those forehands. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.